Hello everyone, this is Helios Raven, I tell you how you do it, even if you don't care. And today we're going to jump back into um, Warhammer 40k for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and in celebration, because I just found out that like one of the first fine casts for Eldar is going to be the Shadow Seer, I decided to um, talk about the Harlequins for a little bit. Um, these are my Harlequins. Um, originally, what they were is it was just um, this group here. And I just recently added these guys because after a campaign I was like, wow. I really need more of these guys. And I've had them all sitting around, and I just haven't gotten around to painting them. And so I decided to um, paint up a few guys today. And then I kind of lost interest to start, you know, working on the um, Warp Hunter here. So I've been um, working on kind of both at the same time. And I thought I figured I'd do a little video on painting Harlequins. And <clears throat> so here we go. One thing about Harlequins is they're probably the most fun. Um, models to paint because they're so bright and colorful in terms of different colors and such and all that. Um, they're a little bit harder to paint now because for some reason Games Workshop decided everybody hates happy colors and decided that everybody likes these grim, dark, emo colors, so it's very hard to find a lot of unique colors that don't involve yellow and red and some very bright blue and green. So, like, you can't really get, like, a lot of, like, the hawk turquoise, like, um, the vile greens, and, like, they used to have a lot of all these crazy, weird colors that you could do, and so for me, that's a little bit troublesome, because I hate mixing paints, and of course, some of the colors you can recreate by mixing a couple of together, or if you're like me and get really lazy, you could go find, um, Cote Arms, um, they were one of the first companies to do Games Workshop paint, they still exist, um, it's um, a British um, site that you can get their um, website from, their paints from, so it's a little bit more money if you end up living in the States. Um, they don't have all the old colors, but they have a lot of the originals that you got, that some people miss, like, they got, they had brass, brass, I'm sorry, which was, um, Bresen Brass, or B, yeah, or like, Bresen Brass in the old group, so it's good to have stuff like that. Um, to be able to get that kind of stuff on hand. And so, what's an interesting thing about them is, is some people can find them pretty tough to paint. Um, I think the biggest problem is, is because the question isn't, how am I going to color them? It's more, how am I going to color this guy now? So, you really can't paint each one with a set mind. You have to pick each one as if you were painting them for the very first time. This way, you don't have, you know, a set color scheme. The only real thing you should keep in mind is maybe the the um, Death Jester. Death Jester tends to be more dark and emo-y colors, because he's supposed to represent death in the Harlequin plays. So he's really the only one that you have to kind of consider, you know, more darkish colors than all. Probably my most favorite one is the Shadow Seer. I kind of liked how he came out the most. He's probably my favorite out of all my Harlequins that I've painted. And he's tough to find. Like, they stopped making him for a while, I believe. I managed to get um, two of them, which was lucky because I was going to have, like, two Harlequin squads, and then that kind of changed up. So. Oh. But, like I said, they, the only, like, real consistent thing I try to do is the weaponry. Try to keep the weapons all gold. And I... Hi, and I gloss them afterwards, give them that little shiny look to kind of give that, you know, because they're supposed to have their suits supposed to, like, fragment their image and such, and so I kind of gave this, you know, like, unreal look to them. And, like, probably the hardest thing to do is to not do the exact same color scheme twice. Um, because, because, you know, they their, co their coats are constantly shifting and changing. And so I got... One starting right here, I'm sorry. One starting right here. And see, you tried to do something a little bit different. I tried to do something different with each one. I tried to do a little neat trick by I did a base of snot green and then did hawk turquoise over it to see what kind of color I would get 
from it. And so there we go with that. And so we're going to jump in and go to paint up a Harlequin. Okay, and so we're going to paint the top part of this guy. We're not going to do a full paint video. You're not going to see me paint it start to finish. Um, unless you guys want me to, you know, you can give me, um, you know, post a bunch of comments if, if you guys want to see me paint the thing in full. And, um, and go try to keep this under 10 minutes because it's been, because I might been, get, it's been taking longer and longer for me to post videos, like, from the simple, like, you know, 30, 45 minutes now, it's been, like, taking, like, three hours for a thing to upload, so trying to avoid that. And what we're going to do is the... Harlequin checkern pattern that um, you tend to get with these models because I f like at least in my gaming store I find a lot of people finding that impressive because they I guess because a lot of them consider it to be the hardest thing to paint on them so I'm gonna go give do that a shot we're gonna put it on the uh, I'm terrible at doing it like on the arms and such so I try to do it on a flat surface if I can we're gonna put it on her um, chest right there. Um, first what we're going to need is Chaos Black, and I use a Citadel Fine Detail Brush. Um, I always wanted to buy a, a micro pen for this work because that would be the best um, um, tool to use, but I can't get my hands on them, so um, at least not now. So I'm just going to work this, but if you can get a micro pen, then I would say use a micro pen instead. The only benefit to, say, using paint over a micro pen is the idea, the fact that um, you can um, scrape it off. And one thing here is, is I don't base coat Harlequins. Um, I don't know why. I don't like base coating in general. Um, it's something that I've been fairly doing relatively new so in case anyone's still going ah, oh, you should be base coating them it's I know I should I agree totally agree with you guys but I don't it's just something I don't like to do and so what we're gonna do is we take the paint brush and we draw a line one single line Okay, now that line is going to help us throughout the entire project. You now have to try and make it where the lines are all running parallel to each other. And because we're using just a very small surface, I'm going to try and make these diamonds really big, just so they stick out and are a little bit easier to fill in. And if you notice your lines are not like perfect, it's okay because their suits are warping their images, so it's okay if they're not perfect because they're not going to. In fact, that might actually work better in battle because you know if, if maybe maybe I don't know for some reason you get uh, fighting a space marine with a critical eye. And they stop by, they stop what they're doing to tell you what's wrong with your outfit, and BAM! I apologize for the very poor joke. Um, so now that we have that done, what we do is we then go across the other way. And we make a series of lines going across the opposite direction of the originals.
probably the hardest part is getting the lines to stay straight because it's just unless you have really steady hands and if they're not 100% straight then the diamonds get all messed up and then you have to sit there and start over if you notice like a line is a little too thick I apologize if uh, my voice spiking I'm kind of pressing up against the camera to give you a good view and have a good view of the model myself um, you can always fix that when you start coloring the guys and there we go we now have a diamond patterned Harlequin. See that? And see what you would do is for coloring is, is you would actually match diamond tip to diamond tip. So this little space here would be one color. You would then paint this diamond the same color. And then the way the diamond up here the same color. Then you'd pick your secondary color and you'd paint the diamond that's right next to the one you just painted here then the one right on top of it the same color then the one on top of that the same color and what's neat about this like I did screw up a little bit it's not perfect but what's great is is she's kinda twisting her um, her head a bit so it's kinda giving the illusion of her head pulling the fabric of the suit making her body making the suit distort itself so it's a neat little effect without me even trying and I'm running low on tape right now for um, the video so if you guys want, I'm pro I'll probably um, continue this in one more video to just paint up the um, squares. But if you want me, to, but if you want me to see paint, but if you want me to go beyond just this checkered pattern, leave a comment to let me know about that. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next time. Until then, this is Helios Raven signing off.